This I believe. Sir Charles Galton Darwin is a physicist. He is also a eugenicist, and in his latest work, The Next Million Years, he has warned of the perils to mankind of ignoring this science. It was he who said that if the population of the world increases at its present rate, in 2,000 years' time, there will be enough space for everybody to stand up, but not enough for everybody to lie down. He has been professor of natural philosophy at Edinburgh University, master at Christ College, Cambridge, and director of the National Physical Laboratory from 1938 until his retirement in 1949. While there, he was in charge of the laboratory's electronic brain. He was one of Britain's chief scientific administrators during World War II, and his is the credit for the device known as Mulberry, which was the artificial harbor for D-Day. Here now is Sir Charles Galton Darwin. I recognize fully that the appeal of things in life will be different for different people. And I can only say what I've found the most important things in life for myself. I count as one of the most important things in the world, the understanding of the world. I've spent most of my time working at the physical sciences, and I count myself fortunate in having lived through the heroic age of physics. When, what with relativity and the quantum theory, our understanding of the nature of inanimate matter has been as, so much revolutionized as it was 300 years ago in the days of Newton. This has been the science I've mostly studied, but I've always had a lively interest in biological subjects too, and these have much affected what I believe. Among such subjects, one is the question of human nature, and this has colored my view of what will happen to mankind in the future. I believe that a great deal of what's now being attempted for our betterment is doomed to fail. And so I don't share the particular enthusiasms of many of the would-be benefactors of humanity. It's true that there have been immense improvements in material conditions during the past century, but they're quite external, and they leave man's fundamental nature no better than it was before. So too, the intellectual triumphs of recent years don't signify that man has become any more intelligent than he was in the preceding Dark Ages. I see no safeguard for us against a relapse into conditions like those exemplified in the sad records of past history. The main hope of bringing about any real betterment in mankind depends on a different thing. It must be based on applying the idea of heredity, a science that's already understood in its principles though hardly yet in many of its applications. Holding this, I believe intensely in the importance of the family as the continuing unit of human life. When the science of eugenics has been more fully developed, there may be a hope on those lines of really bettering humanity. These are the things that, for me, are consciously of chief importance. But underlying them, there are others. The great philosopher Kant once said that there were two things that continually filled him with wonder, the starry heavens above him and the moral law within him. Like him, I too continually wonder at the moral law within me, which dictates my conduct, or perhaps I ought to say the ideals of conduct which I wish I could fulfill. But I'm entirely lacking in the thing which so many people seem to regard as their mainstay in life, a mystical sense of religion. This I lack, and I'm perfectly content to be without it. Those were the beliefs of Sir Charles Galton Darwin, whose scientific work is traditional to the family names of Galton and Darwin, and may be proof of his views on the importance of heredity.